British warplanes are bombing ISIS targets in Syria this morning for the first time. Royal Air Force jets took off from British base in Cyprus to join the American-led campaign. The U.S. and its allies have ramped up the military fight against ISIS since the Paris terror attacks had killed 130 people. Before Nora left for California, she spoke with President Obama at the White House. She asked about the threat of ISIS-related terror attacks here at home. The FBI now has active investigations into ISIS sympathizers in all 50 states. You've had more terrorism-related arrests in one year since September 2001. Do you think Americans are living in a bit of fear that Paris could come here? Well, there's no doubt that they are. You know, what I try to do is to make sure that people understand the threat is real. We have to be vigilant. Um, but uh, we also can't panic and we can't respond out of fear. Uh, we have to make sure that we keep a, uh, a, a clear-eyed view about what needs to be done. Uh, ISIL is not going to pose an existential threat to us. Uh, they are a dangerous organization like Al-Qaeda was. But we have hardened uh, our defenses. Our homeland uh, has never been uh, more protected by more effective intelligence and law enforcement professionals uh, at every uh, level than they are now. The coordination is much better than it is now. Uh, if you look at the number of successful terrorist attacks that have occurred, uh, you know, uh, we have disrupted a lot of them. But the dangers are still there. And so we just have to keep things in perspective. And, you know, the American people should feel confident that, uh, you know, we're going to be able to uh, defend ourselves uh, and make sure that. Uh, you know, we have a good uh, holiday season and go about our lives. I, I, I said this repeatedly overseas. ISIL only wins if uh, we react out of fear and start changing how we live, violating our values. They can't win on the battlefield. They can kill some innocent people, but that's not a victory for them if we respond appropriately. Uh, Nora joins us now from Santa Bernardino. Uh, Nora, having sp spoke with the president, do you get the sense that he feels an imperative to reassure the American people uh, at this moment? You know, Charlie, I think that's exactly right. He is playing the role as calmer in chief. So while he is holding meetings uh, every day with his national security team, getting briefings from his homeland security advisor, um, about threats here at home and what happened here in San Bernardino uh, yesterday. He's trying to reassure Americans to try and go about their daily lives, certainly as we are in the holiday season. But I think, Charlie, what happened here just shows how we're on edge. Authorities are not ruling out terrorism. There's no indication at this point, but they're not ruling it out. We don't know. What we do know is that the two suspects here, this is highly unusual, a husband and wife team who were heavily armed, who were masked, that it appeared premeditated, even though there was sort of an argument at this holiday banquet that turned into this massive shooting, the worst of 2015, the worst since Newtown. So I think you do have the sense, and that's why I asked the, the president that question yesterday, because I myself have felt it traveling, a sense of a sense of fear and a sense of sort of looking around, am I safe where I am? And so I think the president there, as you saw, was trying to play that role of calming people, but you can't let terrorism distract you from your daily lives. Uh, that is a very good summary of this morning and a sense of where we are. So many questions and fewer answers.